Hello and uh, welcome to this training module for the uh, Aldus Academy. This training module is focused on the Speakercraft MRA664, which is a new multi room audio platform uh, which Speakercraft are launching December 2014. This, uh, this platform is very flexible and uh, will allow you to have up to 12 zones. Each chassis is six zones and you can have two chassis giving you 12 zones of multi room audio either in a domestic or small commercial environment. There are four powered zones uh, and two zones are line level only. Control is um, via uh, apps. Uh, we have um, iOS and Android apps available, plus we also have a 7 inch touchscreen, uh, dedicated in wall touchscreen, plus we have um, a little hard button uh, keypad for ancillary rooms and we have um, a very nice uh, hard button handheld remote which is mainly for the home theatre zone which I'll explain more later. Well, one of the nice features of the system uh, is the ability to uh, work with the Sonos um, uh, system. Sonos is well known for its ability to stream music uh, off the internet plus playing music off a of NAS. Uh, but one, one of the things it's not very good at is distributing, should we say, traditional audio devices such as CD players, audio outputs from your Sky set-top set -top box or your cable TV set-top box or DAB radios and those sorts of things and that's where this um, this system brings it all together we can we can connect to Sonos connect to one of the source inputs and actually control it from within the Speakercraft environment i.e. via the Speakercraft app there's no need to leave the Speakercraft app to control so Sonos uh, which which you know, I think we find um, can cause some confusion if customers have to jump between apps. Um, it can cause some confusion and frustration. Whereas with this uh, system, you'll be able to you're able to uh, control what Sonos is doing both from a tune-in radio, Spotify, and just playing music off of a local network share. That's a really nice feature. That's also available through other streaming services platforms. Anything that's uh, LMS which is Logitech Media Server based, plus uh, Autonomics and also Yamaha surround sound amplifiers. So that's really nice. Plus we'll also go into a bit about the ease of programming. This system uh, is all set up and programmed via wizards uh, from within the app, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Looking at the back of the chassis, uh, you can see there's quite a lot of uh, connectivity here, which we'll run through. You can see we have six audio sources can connect to the system where we have um, the conventional red and white analog audio inputs plus we have a loop out on each of the source connections. That's where you're using a second chassis to get those 12 zones. You can loop all of your audio sources through the first chassis, the master, and then into the second chassis which will be the slave giving you 12 zones. Plus I have uh, infrared outputs per zone. So typical scenario here, uh, where I have uh, three audio devices connected to inputs one, two, and three. The um, infrared um, outputs uh, against each zone are actually um, independently assignable, so you don't have to use the IR outputs on source one for for the actual device connected to source one. For example. Um, if it's an iPod dock, you might not have IR control for that source. Uh, you may want, but you may well want to be able to control a TV somewhere in the lounge or something of that nature. Uh, so you can actually use these infrared outputs for pretty well whatever you want to. So it's very flexible. Here I'm showing that I've got the um, sources one and two connected with our IR from the sources one and two but source five you can see I'm using that IR output to control a TV so there's quite a lot of control built into this platform as well and very flexible we've also got a paging facility um, so there's a, effectively another audio input uh, which is a mono audio input uh, which is a uh, audio sensed so you can set this up and hook it up to any audio device, be it some sort of door chiming mechanism 
or um, if you have a control system that has an audio output that can make um, announcements then you can hook that straight in and whenever it detects audio um, you can then it will then mute your various zones and play the audio from that audio input and then when that sensed audio is then finished it'll then flick back to whatever it was doing before uh, plus you've got the loop out for connecting to a second chassis if you have those 12 zones The outputs, um, are, as you can see, have um, speaker level out for four of the zones. Uh, and that's running at 30 watts per channel into 8 ohm speakers or 45 watts per channel into 4 ohm speakers. That allows you, obviously, if um, we can drive down to 4 ohms, that allows you to put two pairs of speakers in parallel off of each zone, if you wish. So if you have a large kitchen diner that you feel warrants two pairs of speakers, then no problem hanging two pairs of 8 ohm speakers uh, off the system, which obviously will then be running at 4 ohms. You'll notice that only zones 1 to 4 are, have got powered outputs. Zones 5 and 6 are line level only, uh, but I have line level output on all zones, and that can be set to either fixed or variable uh, line out. Uh, on a, uh, across the system. So here I have four pairs of ceiling speakers connected to the speaker terminals um, providing, uh, providing audio. With, the, um, with zones 5 and 6, um, these are line only. Um, this was done typically because uh, the vast bulk of majority of uh, multi room audio system installations, they normally have a surround sound amp in the lounge uh, and um, you'd normally go line level from uh, the multi room system into one of the inputs on the surround sound amp. Um, so um, it seems uh, a waste to have extra amplification uh, in this uh, multi-room chassis that isn't being used. So that's why um, two zones are line level only. Um, the, the, the reason why it's two is typically also uh, the outdoor zone where you've got outdoor speakers, you tend to want a bit more power uh, to drive the speakers because obviously you've got very poor acoustics in outdoor environments. So that's again where you might go line level out into an external power amp and drive 100 watts per channel through some outdoor speakers. So that's the uh, the reason why um, uh, zones five and six are line level only. Uh, again, fixed or variable, which is software settable. And that's what I'm showing here. Zone five is connected to a, uh, a surround sound amplifier in the in the living room or the or the home cinema room, and then zone six is going via um, one of our Speakercraft multi-channel amplifiers, uh, delivering uh, nice uh, high-powered output to our ruckus eight-inch speakers. Uh, for the outdoor zone in this example. Obviously there's an ethernet port uh, on the chassis which you'd connect uh, to your um, your IP network either via an ethernet switch or direct to the router um, so that the device is actually a network based device of course which is how the apps uh, talk to the main unit for control. There's also a USB port on the back here and that is primarily used for programming this very nice hard button remote control. Um, this this hard button remote is really primarily intended for the home theater zone. So as I mentioned most systems have a surround sound zone in the living room, the lounge or home theater and, and often there'll be large screen TV, maybe that's where the satellite set-top box or cable TV set-top box is located, plus uh, maybe a Blu-ray player. So you often end up with three or four remote controls uh, in those zones. Uh, so what Speakercraft have done is, is incorporated the ability to uh, both feed and control that home theater zone, um, which is really starting to demonstrate some of the control capability. Uh, it's a very nice hard button remote. It's got a touch screen at the top, um, so it's very, very easy to use. Plus, you've got the hard buttons, which people do like hard button control. Uh, it gives them that tactile feel. The volume control is easy to access and, 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 and use without even having to look at the remote control. It's instantaneous. There's no, you know, unlocking the iPad and launching the app and then doing things. It's there. It's immediate. 
and the kids haven't nicked it to go and play games on and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's very nice uh, and the way that uh, it's programmed is by connecting to this USB port and it's programmed via the Wizards that we'll, go, we'll come to in a minute. And of course uh, a power connection, standard IEC cable um, with um, uh, 240 volt connection. So here you can see an overall scenario, typical wiring diagram. Down the bottom here we have um, three different audio sources connected to the system. Uh, both uh, connected at uh, analog audio outputs plus um, IR for control. Over here I have my four speaker terminals connected up to in-ceiling speakers and then both zone 5 and zone 6 are being used to control two different outdoor zones where zone 5 has got some speaker craft outdoor element speakers and zone 6 have some speaker craft uh, rock speakers where you're perhaps running at 100 watts per channel to give it a bit more power for those outdoor zones. Over here you'll see there is a surround sound amp connected to zone 5 so I can then feed any of these sources can switch through the MRA into a single input on the surround sound amplifier uh, through the control capabilities. Um, you'll see as well that um, uh, I've got an IR emitter connected to the TV so I can control the TV uh, and of course the surround sound amp uh, is on the network and I'll be controlling the surround sound amp using IP control which most surround sound amps tend to have nowadays. For control um, in the home theatre zone I have that very nice hard button handheld remote control that I mentioned. Um, this talks to the system using Wi-Fi over the network uh, for control to tell the system what to do. Uh, plus, um, I've also, just to mention, I've got infrared output on the end of this as well. So had I not put an infrared emitter on this TV, or if I couldn't, if I wasn't able to, for example, not a problem because I can, I can blast infrared out of the handheld remote uh, at the TV as well, which is quite a nice uh, capability uh, to have. Control elsewhere, um, I can use my iOS or Android devices for control, my, either my, my, my phone or my um, tablets. Um, and I can have our 7-inch touchscreen built into the wall as well, as a dedicated touchscreen if that's what you want. Plus we have a nice little hard button remote, uh, hard button keypad rather, which goes into the wall as well, uh, which is great for ancillary rooms. So talking about the user interfaces, as I mentioned, um, iOS and Android, plus we have software for a Mac or PC for control, but we envisage mainly people using their, their, uh, their smartphones or their, or their tablets for control. Uh, we do also have um, both the seven inch touchscreen, which will go in the wall and we perhaps envisage some, pro some, some projects having one of these in the main area, in the main kitchen dining area where they want a dedicated uh, in-wall touchscreen that's always there and not going to go walkabouts where, or, 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 or the battery's flat, um, which, uh, which is very simple to use, fits nice and pretty well flush into the wall, um, requires single Cat5 connection, it's PoE. Uh, so very uh, very simple from a first fix point of view. We also have this hard button keypad, single uh, jang, uh, single J American back box. The, the the seven inch by the way is a double gang American back box. This is a single gang American back box with um, four buttons on the front. You can see favorites one to four, off and volume up and down. And the way you set up the favorites is very simple. You can basically set up that zone to be doing whatever you want from your iPhone or your tablet and then press and hold favorite one and it will memorize that setting. Be it Spotify top 100 tracks via a Sonos, um, Radio 1 via tuning radio on a Sonos, or it's the um, audio output from the Skybox. Whatever you like, you can set those favorites up to do those functions very, very simply, and then just simply click on them to recall those, uh, those presets. Uh, and as I mentioned, here's a, an image of that nice hard button remote uh, in its charging cradle, uh, which would typically reside in the lounge or the uh, home cinema zone. So uh, various options there for control, lots of things covered off nicely. 
Now, uh, typically with um, multi-room audio systems of the past, there'd normally be some dedicated software that's used to program the system and um, the uh, dealers would typically have to come on training courses and be trained how to use that software and program the system and it's all um, quite complicated and sometimes in the past I think more complicated than it needed to have been. Well, Speakercraft have really thought that through uh, and this platform has a very simple wizard-based solution for programming it. In fact, there is no special software for programming this system. It is simply a matter of using the iOS or Android or PC or Mac software that you use to control it to program it. And it's all done via very nice, simple, intuitive wizards. So here on the on this iPad, you on the on the usual control GUI, you press and hold the speaker craft icon, uh, enter a, a code, uh, which then allows you to get into the setup menu, which is obviously protected by a pin code, which is setable by, via the installer. And from here, I configure the chassis, I configure sources, I set up my zones in terms of their names. Um, whether or not I have an attached home theater zone, I want to make use of that home theater control capability uh, and thus the uh, the hard button remote. And as you work through the wizards, it ticks each item so you can see what you've done uh, and then you know when you're finished. Uh, you know, so, so this kind of system is a sort of system you really can uh, take out of the box and follow the wizards and you'll be able to set it up without having to come on long complicated training courses um, across the other side of the country. So chassis configuration will you know, enable the chassis and set up the ethernet settings. It is enabled with DHCP out of the box, so we'll get an IP address off the router to make your life easy. Uh, and then of course you'll want to set that up with a static IP so its IP address never changes because um, obviously yeah, that's something you want to do. Uh, and whether or not there's a second chassis uh, on the system to get that 12 zones. Uh, and whether or not there's the uh, home theatre uh, set up uh, as part of the system. For sources, um, this is where you would be uh, uh, telling it what each individual source is on the system uh, and what they're connected to. Uh, and also um, from a control, a few words on the control side of things, there is a ginormous IR library built into the system. So whether you're adding a, a Denon DAB radio or a Sky TV set-top box or a Virgin Media set-top box or, or it's a Sonos or some other IP streaming device, um, you basically have everything you need set up in, inside the system. In fact, you actually can't learn IR codes. The database is that big, they're that confident, there's actually no way to learn IR codes. If you are in a situation where you have some very strange device, which is IR controlled, which is not in a database, then there is a form on the Speakercraft website you can fill out and they will turn that around within 48 hours. So you have that source control enabled in the system by doing a firmware upgrade and then picking up that new device. So long gone are the days of messing around with complicated IR devices because it's all built in, just click and select. Um, on the source assignment, obviously specifying if this is a master or a slave chassis and if there's a home theatre zone, like a, uh, an Integra or a Yamaha surround sound amplifier, then not only do you need to tell the system that it's connected via zone 5, you also tell it that it's plugged into the game input on the Integra, for example, because the system will, when, when, you, when you're controlling the home theatre zone, it will control the Integra amp as well uh, uh, to set it up on the right source so you can then switch through the sources on the MRA as well as controlling the TV. So really quite powerful control capabilities. And if one of the devices, your one of the sources happens to be a video device, a satellite set-top box, uh, or, or cable TV set-top box, you can also set up favorite uh, screens on the on the uh, control touchscreen, so uh, you can specify I want favorites for Sky News or 
or um, BBC One HD or whatever your channels are and again the channel icons are already built in so you haven't got to mess around with artwork you just click and go very powerful for zone configuration obviously that's going to involve setting up the zone names um, setting up um, your EQ defaults and the default volume um, and whether you have whole house paging um, and also um, you can set up each user interface to have like a the primary zone um, don't have to but if you want to you can set up a primary zone uh, which will then when you launch the app on that device it'll launch with that zone in context so you haven't got to navigate to that zone but if you leave that blank that's fine then the first screen you'll have is the zone selection so you've got to say which zone are you in before you can start controlling something which would be appropriate for an iPad that you want to use as a roaming mobile device but if you have got an iPad that's specific to a room uh, which could actually be built into the wall using our iDocs uh, in-wall iPad housings then you might want to set up a primary zone. Well, as you can see, a very powerful platform, uh, very, very easy to set up, um, really nice the way it integrates the Sonos, uh, which let's face it, is a very popular device and become a household name uh, and really improves that whole Sonos experience by being able to integrate and distribute uh, other sources that Sonos don't really cover very well. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Um, for any more information, please go to our website, www.aldersystems.co.uk um, or drop us an email at sales at aldersystems.co.uk and um, we'd be very happy to talk to you and, um, and help you any way we can. Thanks again for listening and um, hope to speak to you again on another module soon. Thank you.